Welcome to the world famous Saxon Bog. My name is Clinton Neenhouse. I am the head naturalist for the Friends of Saxon Bog. Um, and the first bird that we're going to profile is sharp-tailed grouse, in particular their lecking behaviors. And with sharp-tailed grouse, they use this habitat that we're in right now. This kind of semi-open, alder, willow swamp, uh, places that they have protection. And that's important for a female grouse who's raising young. Usually leks are adjacent to that habitat, and usually those females are going to nest adjacent to that habitat. So what a lek is, um, is an area, a defined area, um, where males of a species are displaying to females of a species. Um, at least in Minnesota, it's very easily seen in the grouse. Here in Sac Zim, uh, in particular, it's sharp-tailed grouse. Um, these birds um, have two different leks in the bog. Uh, one is far more active than the other, um, and that is the, the lek along Rochek Road, um, east of County Road 29, just south of the Welcome Center. And on this lek, you might show up and you might see these birds congregated in an open space. And that's really what a lek is to some of these species. Large open area, often with a small rise so they can see predators, um, and a place where males are displaying. Sing all the way up through March into April, um, and sometimes you'll even see them there in May. Um, but a lek is that place, that place of concentration for these birds. With sharp-tailed grouse, you get a lot of dancing. So, First of all, for your sharp-tailed grouse, you get your name because of your sharp tail. They have a nice fanned tail with two longer central tail feathers that they use as a prominent display point. So if you're a grouse, tail comes up, tail fans out, their wings come out. And the neat thing about sharp-tailed grouse, too, is they have throat sacs. They have purple throat sacs, um, which they use to inflate and deflate, uh, much like you'll see from greater prairie chickens. You can tell the female grouse on a lek by what she's doing. She's walking around, kind of wandering through, checking out the males. But again, ultimately, she's probably going to end up in the middle with that middle male. The grouse, they do something called snow roosting. Now, what snow roosting is, it's just basically digging in and getting underneath the snow to help insulate you. So to get out of that, what these birds will do is they'll dig right in under the snow. They'll have an entry hole, wiggle their way down, and then they'll move in a little bit. And that's going to keep them warm, and quite warm, 30, 40, 50 degrees temperature difference underneath that snow than being out exposed right in the open. And this will help them survive. This keeps their metabolisms a little bit lower. They don't have to burn as much food to stay warm. Their feathers can help them do that, but being under that snow adds a second layer of protection for these birds. Now, finding a snow roost is very difficult. These birds are very good at hiding their entrances. Their exits, however, can be a little dramatic. If you were walking in an area like this, you may kick up a grouse. They won't give you any warning. They will just explode out of the snow, leaving very well-defined entry and exit holes. If you're out in the winter, the lek along Rochek Road is a great place to check, usually in the mornings. Um, and sometimes, as of, as of recent, they've been coming into the feeders um, at their house, dancing in the morning, coming in to feed, and then leaving to go roost in the afternoons. 